roshni ka karwa this podcast is brought to you by barrier break solutions private limited and score foundation Hi my name is George Abraham and welcome to this episode of Iwe uh, Conversations my guest today is Dr Preeti Sharma from Mumbai she is an ayurvedic doctor she is also a yoga instructor teacher and a therapist thank you george and uh, thank you for this opportunity thank you for inviting me here yeah so preeti um, you know you've chosen uh, to become an ayurvedic doctor a young person growing up in a city like mumbai what made you make this choice <laughs> that was in 1988 you know when i had passed out my <clears throat> 12th standard and it was always a focus in my mind i wanted to become a doctor you know, since my childhood and uh, ayurveda being one part in our lifestyle when we were young my parents my father especially Uh, very much trusted ayurveda and we had quite a few ayurveda medicines also in the house and we were treated that way many times we were following the natural way of life so all that uh, actually you know motivated me to get into ayurveda because i thought maybe something is more in it and uh, i i need to explore uh, the thing which is actually our own science coming from the root from india itself and uh, i should learn this and i also came to know at that time that when i study ayurveda i learn almost two pathies so i have a good practice good uh, knowledge of allopathy medicine as well and even ayurveda because i had also seen quite a few ayurveda qualified people practicing like a general practitioner with allopathy medicines so with the support of my father of course very strong support behind me and i got into ayurveda medicine now i also uh, believe that you started learning yoga so what uh, actually is the link uh, or what prompted you to also learn yoga at that point of time yoga also came into my life at a very early age so i was in my second year and uh, there was this uh, from the ayurveda the science there was one subject containing one small topic of yoga and uh, for that reason we had a visit to this institute called kaivalya dham which was just beside my ayurveda college yes and uh, that was an amazing thing we had people coming from that institute in our college to demonstrate and then we were made to visit that center and there i was actually amazed by seeing that in those days i'm talking about 1991 that time there were about 500 patients coming in at kaivalya dham every day and uh, they were getting healed no medicines were given and uh, they used to undergo a lot of this different practices of yoga and uh, we saw our instructors you had told us that see this person is suffering from so and so problem and there is hypertension and diabetes and this and that and uh, they are getting healed and how this was going on. that ambience was there i was just amazed by it i was really attracted by that i said okay let me just go deeper into this subject and then i enrolled myself for the course at kavila dham as well you got married you have two children a son and a daughter and the life was going on and then suddenly at the age of 30 you discovered that you had retinitis pigmentosa and you started losing your eyesight what were the fears what were the emotions and how did you deal with it so it was a shock it was something a jolt you know uh, where a break where we got this and me and my husband both were uh, what to do when you are then obviously initially it was like consulting this ophthalmologist that one and uh, trying to find the solution to this so all of a sudden things changed it was hard but then when i so used to see my children they are small and they needed my care i am a mother for them you know for i mean they don't know what i am going through at this time 
and they expect the same uh, like any child would expect from a mother. So I need to become strong and I have to accept this and find out my own ways and means to deal with this. And uh, in this process, of course, my brother who I was already diagnosed with this retinitis pigment was a, a few years before me. He supported me a lot. He was a great support to me morally and uh, very, uh, very much always with me. No? So he used to guide me how he got adjusted and how I have to deal with the situation. So that was the thing gradually. He taught me how to use technology and he motivated me to use this. Of course, fame, taking care of the family and all the things that are going on simultaneously. And my children were growing. So handling them with the studies and also visiting school, socializing with them. And they also needed to accept this. So all this process going on, being with the family, being from a Rajasthani family, also convincing you know, people, extended family in the uh, the complete like in in-laws relationships and all so that was all uh, a little tough yeah i would say that yes there was a determination that I, i'm not going to like just sit and cry and just go down i whatever i wanted to do in life i want to pursue that i want to go ahead i do not want to stop so all that together of course helped me and uplifted me and uh, yeah we went ahead and my husband, of course, always was there, physical support for me at the end, you know, every day, every time. He used to, he, uh, that one thing he had told me that, see, you have to accept this. It is like any other disease. People live with any other disease. And both of us being doctors, both of us from the medical side, we came to know, yeah, this is, if it is, this is incurable. We have to learn to live with it. This is something which has affected the retina. And you have to accept it, just live with it, learn to live it. And I'm sure you will do that. So that was his confidence as well. Okay, so let's now uh, move on to uh, your professional uh, work. So you, you uh, did it, did you have a longish professional break? And, and did it take an effort to restart your professional work? Or uh, uh, you managed to carry on? It was not a big break as such, because I was still carrying on. I was, uh, when this was diagnosed also, I was with my clinic. I was doing the general practice as well. And uh, of course, as I told you, my passion for yoga. So in my general practice also, I was uh, giving yoga and I was working for this underprivileged people. So in the clinic, you know, I used to see all that pain and all that. So, uh, and that, you know, financial constraint also. So I used to always think that, uh, if I teach them some yoga and the thing, it will keep them in a better shape, better condition, and the healthcare cost also reduces. So yeah. that was also where I was applying, and it was giving me a lot of motivation. So this was also a very good uh, place where I worked, and uh, I learned a lot. I got connected to actual the humanity, you know. So this was very good. And gradually, then one day I decided, oh my God, I'm seeing so many patients. In, the, in a day, I used to get such patients that, you know, they used to say that, hey, give me some poison, even so many medicines, I'm fed up of medicines. And that time also, I used to, you know, advise them some yoga practices. And they used to feel happy with that, you know, repeatedly, they used to come over and that was giving me a lot of motivation. So one day I thought, okay, now enough of general practice, giving medicines. There are many doctors, many doctors who do this. There are people to do this, but I can work something beyond medicines. I can work full time into yoga. You know, not it was not only. I mean, I was doing part time. I was taking care of this small center. I was teaching. I was uh, having my own consultations for my own clients. I was giving them lessons, private lessons. Also. But then I thought, now let me just uh, quit all this general practice and giving medicines, prescribing medicines. I should just come over to yoga. Complete yoga therapy. Then uh, somewhere along the line, you set up your own therapy center, which you call the Pran Yoga Therapy Center. 
Why yes. don't you tell us a little bit about this? Me and my husband, both of us were into this because he's also very passionate with yoga. And for him also, it was becoming very tedious, you know, as you know, with the pharma industry and uh, with his corporate job, with his own practice. And so he was getting very, it was becoming tedious for him also. And uh, he also wanted to devote full time to yoga. So ultimately, he also decided to, uh, you know, completely devote his time to yoga. And we set up this Prana Yoga Therapy Center. I mean, we tr- thought that we should name it, make one banner out of it. And under that banner, we can work together. So that was, that's how we named it as Prana Yoga Therapy Center. We got it registered. And it was like three years back when we decided, three, four years back, when we named it and we registered it. If you know of anyone with vision impairment, who needs guidance on living life with blindness, please share the IWA National Toll-Free Helpline number 1-800-5320-469. The number is 1-800-5320-469. So what's the kind of activities that you take up under this banner? We have these therapy programs for different types of ailments for patients. And it is uh, also a teacher's training uh, center wherein we make new yoga teachers under the uh, syllabus prescribed by the YCD, that is the Yoga Certification Board, and that is the body designed by Ayush Ministry. Right. So they do the standardization. They give this certificate for a uh, syllabus for this certificate courses of yoga yeah. teachers training. The other interesting question is that you are blind. You can hardly see or you can't see at all. Mm-hmm. So how do you, when you teach yoga, how do you make sure that uh, the knowledge and the skill is being transferred? On site when I'm teaching, of course, the client is there in front of me. Yeah. And uh, uh, it is always possible to you know, talk to the client and touch the client, you know, the, I mean, if I want to examine, I can see the temperature, I can, you know, read the pulse. So all that is possible. When I'm teaching, of course, the instructions are very precise, verbal instructions, yeah. very, very precise. And I'm performing, they can see me. They also perform, they copy me. Plus, I'm teaching them, giving them proper verbal instructions. Plus, I also ask them what effect they are feeling then and there. Right. So any particular position which is being done, yeah. I stay there in that position. They are also staying there in that position. The so yoga means always it is, you know, it's holding a position. Right. So whenever you do any particular position or a posture, we call it asana. Yeah. You hold that asana, you stay in that posture for some time. And that is the time, you know, I give them instructions. Okay, you're feeling a stretch here at the back. You're feeling a compression here in the calf. You're feeling this. So those particular changes, what are happening then and there in the body, in the breath, all that I guide them. Or I ask them. It's always like interactive. So I ask them, what are you experiencing? And their experience actually tells me, is it right or wrong? And uh, if it is, you know, wherever need the correction, I do that. And if needed, I touch the client and correct the position. When it's online, what happens? Yeah. So online, again, it is the same thing. I am demonstrating. They can see me. I adjust my camera, my video that way. So they see me. They listen to my instructions. So these things are very clear from the start that they have to be very attentive to the instructions. Yeah. So their eyes and ears both should be open. Yeah. Many times it does happen, you know. Uh, even like for me also, it might have happened when I was sighted that if I'm seeing uh, anybody seeing, they do not pay attention to the words to that extent. Right. And it is usually happening, which I always noticed with my other friends and people around me also. Yeah. So I when I, this class starts, I usually tell them that, yeah, you need to see and also listen to my instructions. The instructions are going to be really precise. So please be very attentive to your 
uh, to the instructions to the ear, to your ears as well. Right. Then they are watching me. I am performing, and they also perform. Then again, the same interaction is going on. Only the minus pointers here. I cannot go near them and touch them. Yeah. Yes. This still works because I am always interacting with them. What they are experiencing. What they are. The experience. The after effect, of course, reveals what is being done. Has it been done rightly or is it wrong? I've also uh, read and heard that you uh, are now also teaching blind people to learn yoga and to become yoga teachers. How do you do that? Because they are not seeing you. So this must be challenging. It is challenging. But yes, it is very exciting. And I'm very happy that I could do that. This also, you know, uh, started, it actually triggered the thought process in my mind, uh, I think for five years back. You know, when uh, in my in our center, we had invited, uh, we started inviting different teachers from different other specialities, and uh, they were doing these classes and all. And very well-known teachers, very nice, even they are known in their subject. You know, yoga also has different, different ways and different uh, patterns of teaching. So some teacher excels in some pattern. And we wanted to give our students all that experience. So we used to invite teachers. And they used to conduct very beautiful classes. But I used to be always there in the class. And I was the only blind person in the class. And many times I could not follow what they are explaining, what they are teaching, what they are making others do. So there I used to feel that teachers are lacking in that skill where they can teach a blind person. Of course, I don't deny that person is a good teacher, very good um, uh, in, at their job and they really do the class and everyone in the class they are liking their session but I was not enjoying and that was I felt it's not my drawback I am blind but then the teacher also is lacking in that skill so when I am teaching someone I am making yoga teachers I want them to be skilled in this aspect as well Yeah. so that was one thought which was always lingering in my mind yeah. And uh, when we started with the teacher's training courses and yeah. gradually we progressed into that and then I got the confidence and I also started uh, because of this uh, uh, COVID thing, we shifted completely all of our activities to online. Yeah. So online activities actually, you know, this uh, gave me this thought process that I should do something now here that I can do for the blind people. Yeah. The peer, and I cannot see so even everyone needs it. And I used to meet quite a few friends who really needed yoga. Yeah. So it so happened that in January 2021, uh, my yeah. brother he wanted a yoga teacher for his own uh, some health issues. Yeah. So I pro- I asked in my team that who is interested. Yeah. So I was teaching him. But yes, I was. Uh, I thought maybe because of my lack of time and all, I asked one of my teachers, one of the team members to assist me. And then I asked him whether he would be able to do it. He said yes. And he started teaching Planet. And I guided him how to teach and what to, how to be precise in verbal instructions and all that. And he was teaching him well. He was finding Planet. My brother was finding relief with his problems. And it was nice, nicely going on. Then he shared his this thing to another friend of his. And yeah. he also was looking for someone, a yoga instructor. This friend is also blind. So I provided another teacher to this friend as well. Yeah. And uh, I instructed her how to do that. And she is also doing a good, good job, yet it is going on. Their lessons are going on. Yeah. And this activity was shared by these two teachers in the team. Yeah. Uh, that uh, we were having this 25 to 30 teachers in a team. Yeah. So they were having this uh, sharing in the meeting, which they had. Yes. All of them listened to it and it was very into, uh, very exciting for them. The whole team got excited and they were very enthusiastic that even we would like to do this. So I said, okay. And uh, then we had very quite a few practice sessions with them. So I was guiding them. I was doing a whole session with all the team of the teachers with them blindfolded yeah so they were all blindfolded and i uh, taught them how you experience 
the yoga class when you yourself are not seen. Yeah. And it was a wonderful session. They all understood the lack of it. And uh, they were all ready. Yes, we would like to do this. And that's how this came up. We put out this uh, in notice that we would like to teach people who cannot see. Uh, yeah. So we got very good response and uh, still this team is teaching. We are having uh, about say 50 clients now uh, who are doing this. Uh, so I, I'm just talking about the personal thing. So personalized, semi-personalized, these plans are there. And uh, now we have come up with a group plan also. So we are uh, taking five to six people in, in one class online. Yeah. And uh, the teacher is teaching them. So the teacher is watching them, of course, and they are also teaching them verbally, giving instructions nicely. And uh, yeah, now our clients are doing Surya Namaskar as well, the sun salutation part. Yeah. Uh, very famous, as you know. To support our work with the blind and visually impaired, you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in Please note www.scorefoundation.org.in While you are uh, running PYTC, that's Pran Yoga Therapy Center and uh, doing all these wonderful work, you've also been traveling. You've, you've traveled to do training programs in Europe as well as in other Asian countries. Uh, tell us something about that. I specialize in pregnancy yoga. Yeah. So I did prenatal classes, postnatal classes. So that was my favorite subject when I started. So that was also another story. As I told you, many things were going side by side in my life. Yeah. And uh, so this prenatal yoga courses I give as a skill enhancement program to yoga trainers yeah. so already certified yoga trainers they come to us and we give them the skill enhancement in the pre and post hotel yoga yeah. so this thing I was doing this on-site workshop we had done in Germany for the yeah. German yoga teachers yeah. so those I had done that in those days when I was partially sighted yeah. so yeah that went well it was a good experience and uh, those days that time I came to know that irrespective of the nationality, irrespective of the caste, religion, race, whatever, people are interested in yoga so much because yoga is something for humanity. So that was my experience with Germany. And uh, then in Vietnam, I had gone there. There also I had conducted a women's wellness program. So there also it was, uh, that workshop was very beautiful. There in uh, Women actually found out something, you know, something, you know, uh, something unfolding out of themselves. That right. was a realization. Uh, usually it does happen in many societies that women are suppressed and uh, many emotions, bottled up emotions are there, many things hidden in their hearts. So right. this workshop was very beautiful. We got really connected to so many women. And uh, yeah, it was at uh, Vignon city in Vietnam. Well, uh, Preeti, uh, I think what you talked to us today is spectacular. And uh, I think the fact that you are bringing yoga to blind people and empowering blind people also to uh, become uh, a practitioners of yoga and uh, be possibly teachers of yoga. I think that's very, very encouraging. Another area where young blind people could aspire professionally. I think that's wonderful. And I think your life story is very inspiring. Thank you very much for uh, speaking to us and uh, spending this time with us. Thank you. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Barrier Break Solutions Private Limited and SCORE Foundation. Yeah, no,